language that cannot be divided into words. For the purposes of this post, word is defined as a unit of language such that has some meaning on its own, often relating to the real world. Complex utterances can be formed simply by transmitting multiple words. There are few enough words for a speaker of the language to know most of them i.e. less than about a million for humans. All reasonably bandwidth efficient, general purpose forms of communication, real or imagined, seem to have words in this general sense. Human spoken and written languages, including unique ones like Paraha. Human sign languages usually have distinct signs that are basically words. As far as I know, all constructed languages like Esperanto, Lojban, Ithkul, Toki Pona, etc. Fictional languages like Klingon, Quenya, Dothraki. Even the circular language from arrival has words in the general sense sentences can be split up into symbols with individual meanings. In Max Harm's Crystal Society, there are AI and alien characters that think differently from humans. However, the AIs communicate through concept representations that are basically words, and the alien's language uses tilde 1000 symbols that can be translated into words. Programming languages have variables, keywords, commands, etc., the last two of which have intrinsic meanings. When we create a language made entirely of syntax and variables, it is always by assigning meaning to certain concepts e.g. lambda fx, x for the number zero. However, if we relax the requirement that the form of communication is efficient and general purpose, I can think of several examples of wordless languages whose sentences cannot be easily split up into symbols of any kind. Photos and videos are a general purpose form of communication, but even compressed photos and videos have huge bandwidth requirements, and are thus inefficient. Bees have dance communication where the direction, distance and quality of food are communicated simultaneously, not serially. But this is not general purpose communication. Human body language for indicating emotions. But as far as I know, human body language used for general purpose communication basically becomes sign language. Question. The idea is to create a version of the starfish alien language trope in an advanced alien civilization where the language is actually plausible. Most existing examples just have an exotic medium, body language, music, telepathy, or just handwave the unintelligibility. A strange inherent structure for a well-developed language would be far more interesting, and open up narrative possibilities like a universal translator being unable to translate anything an alien says until they have finished talking. So, how would a language whose thoughts cannot be broken down into words work, and how would it feel to be an alien communicating in this manner? If you think it's impossible, why? Hashtag Shaka, when the walls fell. English has a few good examples that you could use to build up an even more obfuscated language. Bow, lead, read. You've just read each of those words, but without some sort of context to lead you on, you can't tell which use of the spelling I've chosen. While the language can be split into words, out of context they're just meaningless strings of syllables apart from read which at least has a fixed context, and written down it's even worse as you don't even know which pronunciation is required. Develop the language so that the meaning of each word is dependent on every other word in the sentence and none of them have meaning in isolation. Perhaps instead of words having roots, entire sentences or paragraphs have roots and the rest of the words are just a series of prefixes and suffices that modify the root. Hashtag Dharmak and Jalad at Tanagra. Anti-disestablishmentarianism is not just a word, it's a movement, a period in history, a whole swath of social context. To understand the word, its usage, and meaning, is much like understanding the titles I'm using, without the cultural context on which they depend, they're meaningless. Hashtag Picard and Dathan at El Adrell. You could also vary the meaning by social context. Who is saying it to whom? What are their relative social statuses? Again, written down the way we normally would, you're at a loss as you don't know which of the speakers has the higher social status. And why is all their fiction explicit about the size and style of the hat each character wears?